What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another video. As you guys can tell, we are doing another PC build, guys. So, if you guys didn't know, July or August, it was like late July of this year, I did a my very first PC build guide, which was a not me actually building a PC, but making uh, a a parts list for you guys, uh, for you guys, so that you can build it yourself if you have the money, if you want to get into PC gaming. And this is all for you guys. I'm not building the computer myself. I'm just making a theoretical build using PC Park Picker dot com and, you know setting a budget for myself and giving it to you guys to suggest what the best pc parts you should get for your certain budget last time i did a 800 pc build guide which can max out most of your games at 1080p play at medium to high settings at 1440p and do a little bit of 4k gaming but it's not really a 4k meant you know P gaming pc that one was the 800 pc gaming bill if you guys want to watch that you, you can you know search it up on my channel i might have the link in the description if i remember um you remind me if you guys don't see it down there but as you guys can tell we're doing a 500 pc budget build this time and i'm using a pretty new component that you guys may be excited about but you will got to watch the video to find out what that is anyways this is a perfect build for you um relatively new pc gamers or have been gaming on a pc but you've been building on like a dell desktop for a while and you don't have that much money to, you know you don't have like a thousand dollars to pay for a high-end budget gaming or a high-end gaming pc this is for you guys who are also maybe if you're deciding between getting a ps4 or an xbox one or a gaming pc and why i really would suggest gaming pc overall is because one thing the gaming performance for a pc for around the same price you can get better performance um you know on your games you can you can set the graphics will look a lot better at higher frame rates and you can even connect a controller to a PC. So if you guys like the con like console because of the controller, no problem. You can easily connect a controller, an Xbox 360 controller, to a PC with like automatically. And the you can connect a PS3 one, but you might have to go through a little bit more of a process. Anyways, they're really simple. You can connect a, c a controller to a PC, and if you really want to, you can con you can put your PC in your living room. But honestly. If you're really only even playing living room, you might as well just get a console. The PC master is going to get mad at me for saying that. So if you don't have that much money, I really would suggest it because the gaming performance is going to be better and it looks better for around the same price or maybe just a little bit higher or um, more expensive. And it, it is a full blown PC so you can do all your web browsing, you can watch all YouTube videos, you can make YouTube videos without having you know, a laptop and a capture card on a, if you want to record console videos. You can do your homework, your schoolwork, any productive work and gaming and entertainment all on a pc you can do everything on a pc with better gaming and it's just a better experience overall in my opinion but this is you know this is just this is up for debate i might do a pc versus console debate i'm not gonna be the elitist that most pc gamers are i'm just gonna I'm, that will be for another video anyways this intro is going on for too long this is for you guys who are on a budget Stay tuned. So for the processor, I chose the AMD FX6300. It is a six core processor, so this has six physical cores, which is pretty awesome. And it is clocked at 3.5 gigahertz. So a lot of people, and I mean a lot of people, for budget builds really always recommend this processor. Or they choose this or the i3-4130. Um, the i3-4130 is mainly only meant for gaming, and that means that it's not too good, you know, at rendering videos, you know, editing, at live streaming. It's only really meant for gaming and really nothing else. The AMD FX300 is also just really meant for gaming. I th you can do a little bit of, you know, live streaming and video editing and rendering. I, I think it is slightly better than the uh the i3 4130 maybe mainly because it has six actual physical cores and the i3 has two cores and with hyper threading it, ha it can have four and for gaming um the i3 is probably if you're only gonna do gaming like strictly gaming you might want to you know spend a little bit more and get the i3 and just use the hyper threading for four cores because most games don't really use more than four cores really um, and the i3 is, can be perfectly good, and the i3 can give you some, a bit better frames here and there, but for a cheaper price, you can get the AMD FX6300, and it's just a pretty good deal, and for a 6 physical core processor, you can't go really go wrong with any, anything else in a budget build. For the motherboard, I went with a standard Gigabyte GA78LMT motherboard, it's a micro ATX size, and of course has the AM3 Plus socket, which is what the AMD FX6300 is. 
and it is about only 67 to 70 dollars you can find it for a bit cheaper for a bit more expensive but of course you want to find the cheapest you can get it does have raid support onboard video unfortunately there's no sli crossfire but you're not going to be doing crossfire or sli at all the unfortunate thing is it doesn't have sata 6 gigabyte ports which kind of sucks but of course you if you want to get an atx board and spend a little bit more you can get something with sata 6 gigabytes um this has six sata ports but there are three gigabytes per second as i said before and this is just a standard motherboard motherboard it doesn't look too good it's kind of like a blue and black Oh well, it's fine for it's fine. If you don't really if you don't really if you do care about color and if you do want that 60 gigabyte per second SATA port, you can go get another motherboard. As I said guys, you can customize every any single component of this PC to your liking. For our memory, I chose the Kingston HyperX Fury White uh, 8 gigabyte mo set. It is a 2 by 4 gigabyte uh, set. It is DDR3, which is just perfectly fine for you guys. This is a budget build. You don't need like DDR4. And at 1600 megahertz, with honestly, these exact specs are the sweet spot for most for any gaming build. From a $400 gaming PC to a $800 gaming PC, 8 gigabytes is just perfect. Just perfect. It's the, it's the type of thing where you don't really need too much of it if you're going for a higher end beam PC. If you're gonna do a lot of like a ton, and I say like a ton of rendering, um, video editing, you know, After Effects, Photoshop work, and a, a bunch of that, and maybe if that's your job, then you might wanna go with 16 gigabytes if you would really think you need that or if you're gonna be using a lot in the future then you can save a little bit more, but I recommend just, you know, getting 8 gigabytes and spending that cash you can get to get a better graphics card, which is, of course, pretty smart if you're doing a gaming PC. So, 8 gigabytes is perfect. It's perfect for any gaming, most gaming PCs, actually. It's 8 gigabytes of RAM, it's cheap, it's only about $50, or actually, it's up to, like, $60 now, but honestly, that's it. That, that, it. It's as cheap as you can get. So for our storage, I chose with what most YouTubers on a budget build choose. It's the Western Digital Caviar Blue one terabyte hard drive. It's 7200 RPM standard, 3.5 inch. Of course, it, that's what a hard drive is. And it's an er internal hard drive. You guys know that. And the Western Digital Caviar Blue is pretty much what most um, people recommend because honestly for its price of, of about only $50 $55 you're getting a one terabyte hard drive with it's pretty fast it's a pretty good price um, per gigabyte or an end price to performance ratio the Western Digital Cavi Blue is just perfect it's it's in that spot where most youtubers choose it it's kind of like 8 gigs of RAM where it just it's all it's enough if you want to go with two terabytes or if you want to go with an ssd you can save up a little bit more and of course get two terabytes if you're gonna you know watch a lot of movies listen to a lot of music store a bunch of big files and a bunch of big games one terabyte can be not enough for some people so of course i rec i can recommend that or if you want you can get an ssd for your operating system if you guys are really into that but for now, this single one terabyte Western, Div Western Digital Caviar Blue is perfectly fine. And for $50, it's, it's amazing. <laughs> for the case, I chose the Rosewell Galaxy O2. It's an ATX mid tower case. So this will fit an ATX micro ATX and mini ITX motherboard. Of course, we do have a micro ATX motherboard. But if you guys want an ATX motherboard with a bit better features, you guys can switch out our Gigabyte JA78 LMT for a slightly better one. It's black, which is it looks pretty good you don't want to go like a really if you want a really fancy one this actually, this actually looks pretty cool it has a red neon look to it and the front looks real it looks like a really good case it's not those generic cases it looks really sick as you guys can tell the picture now um and what i really liked about this case is it has three five and an inch quarter bays or five and a quarter inch bays which you probably won't use um and it has four three and 3.5 inch base so you can fit up to four hard drives on this and it actually has one 2.5 inch base so you can actually um and you know put an, an ssd in here without having to use a, a 2.5 inch to 3.5 inch bracket which is awesome this has what most cases don't have you can you usually find like 2.5 inch base on like 80 dollars to cases but this one is only about 40 dollars 45 dollars or you can find it for a bit cheaper a bit more a lot more expensive but for what it features it's a pretty good deal and it looks pretty cool and it's going to be housing all your computer components this is a pretty good pick for the power supply now really do not recommend people to cheap out on the power supply when you're building your pc never ever go cheap on your power supply that's probably 
one of the most important components of your build because if this dies it's probably going to take a lot or all of your uh, other components with it so you don't want to you're going to get a reliable power supply that has you know enough power and juice to power your graphics hard your cpu everything make sure it's from a reliable brand and it's a, a reliable you know branch in their brand like like corsair makes really good power supplies and not so good power supplies it goes with every comes like cooler master makes really great power supplies and not so great power supplies you gotta know which one are their high quality power supplies so this one is the evga 500 watt 80 plus bronze power supply it's the 500b model which is be slightly better than the just normal 580 plus certified one this is of course has a uh a 80 around an 85 percent efficiency which is good it is not modular which some people like if you want a modular one you can go for the cx 500 m but i chose this because it's cheap and i think it's a better quality than the cx 500 m i don't really know but this one is just perfectly fine if you want a modular one the corsair cx 500 m is or i think might be around the same price i don't know might, i think it's a bit more expensive this is only about 40 dollars and for 40 dollars a 500 watt power supply is plenty enough for the system actually a 500 you can you can easily go with a 400 watt power supply for the system but i just will go for the 500 watt because if you want to do a bit of overclocking on your graphics card you can do don't overclock your cpu because this has a stock cooler on it if you guys want to get a aftermarket cpu cooler um you can get that like the hyper evo 212 you can get that so or actually no it's uh for amd cpu it's like you can get the uh h80i or something i'm not too sure but yeah anyways this power supply is really reliable it doesn't have any japanese capacitors which is but it's pretty high quality. It scored a pretty. It uh, has a pretty good review on Johnny Guru, which is, of course is a trusted power supply reviewing website, <laughs> and it has a continuous wattage of 500 watts. It's a pretty good, reliable, and quality power supply for a budget build. And we just went with a the cheapest LG DVD slash CD optical drive you can get. <laughs> it's literally only about 15 dollars. And it's made by LG. You're you're not really gonna unless you're gonna watch like Blu-ray movies. Um, no one really uses the optical drives these days, only for installing Windows. And the cheapest one you can get if you don't even you don't even need an optical drive. So if you want to scrap this, save about fifteen dollars. You can not even use an optical drive at all. If you want to install Windows using a USB, you can do that. But if you, I'm just in, I just put this in here for you guys who just you know want to install it on a disc. Last but not least, I chose the EVGA GeForce GTX 950. It is the super super clock machine with its ACX 2.0 cooler and it has 2 gigabytes of VRAM. So the EVGA GeForce GTX 950 is pretty new right now and honestly for its price of about $150 or you can get it uh, a lot cheaper than that. It is a great quality. Honestly, for its price tag, the 950 is perfect. It, it, they're saying it's like a MOBA game card. It's meant for like MOBA games, but honestly, it can play your AAA new titles at medium to even high settings at 60 frames per second or or higher. I have a GTX 750 Ti in my build right now, and I, I'm guessing that this is equal or maybe slightly better. And for around the same price as GTX 750 Ti, you can't really go wrong with this. The GTX 950 is a great bargain right now. If you guys want to spend a little bit more, and if you have a little bit more money, you can get the GTX 960. And the 960 has a 4 gigabyte version and the 2 gigabyte version. 2 gigabyte is around the same price as the 950. So, or I think slightly more expensive, but the 950 can play most of your games at 60 FPS at medium to high settings. You're not going to max out most of your games, your AAA games at all on this card. You're not going to max out, you know, you're not going to max out Battlefield 4, you're not going to max out The Witcher 3. Um, for some games like Counter-Strike, of course, you're going to get like amazing frames per second but of course most cards will get that nowadays and it just for a budget build you're gonna if this is your first time build you're gonna love pc gaming and if you're not gonna be recording or video editing the 950 is perfect for only about 150 dollars so i went this video was a bit too long for my taste i'm really sorry about that but i hope you guys enjoy this 500 dollar pc budget build it's not really a console killer but if you guys have more money or more dough you can easily get this 
computer, build it, and have an amazing killer time with your PC. Hope this guy's help. Hope this guide helped you guys. And of course, if you want to customize or change any components, feel free. It's a free country, and you can do it to whatever your budget is. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hope you all enjoyed it. If you want to see more of these, less of these, leave it all in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching.